uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. All right, roll call. Marks. Here. Van Blarko. Here. Thompson. Here. Leonard. Here. Elkin. Here. Manor. Here. Blenheim. Here. All right, the consent agenda items. We have the minutes from May 3rd, a special uh, council, May 17th, special council of June 1st. May the whole May 17th, airport commission May 17th, and recycling committee May 22nd. Mr. Mayor, I have one correction to the minutes. Okay. That We're, is, I wasn't given credit for being there, but I made a motion later on. I was at the meeting, so I don't remember which one it was, but I think it might have been, was it May? You're on May 3rd one. We were not on the special council for May 17th. Which was the liquor license, and you were here. Yes, that's right. So he moved to him. Yep, he needs to be added to the notes from the seventeenth. Hey, any other corrections or omissions? Make a motion to accept the uh, minutes for for approval with that change. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, we're moving into public comment. Um, can I ask for a change to the agenda, or an sure. amendment to the agenda, please? Sure. Um, I'd like to add on here a conversation about billboards the city owns, please. Okay. Billboards that the city owns. I just want to have a brief discussion about that. Can we do that if it hasn't been noticed? You can do it in public comment. Okay. As long as we don't take action on it. I... Okay. okay. Um, then can I start public comment then? Sure. <laughs> um, I understand that there's been some discussion about the billboards that the city owns and um, doing something different than what is currently on the billboards. And I don't know if anything's actually happened with any of that. Um, but I do believe that that's something we all need to discuss instead of just making changes without our approval. So I just want to make that known. Um, I know that there's some issues with a billboard that is uh, eastbound on Highway 8, um, and someone was supposed to be looking into that. I don't know if that's happened yet as to ownership, what the right-of-way is, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'd like some resolve to that and to have a conversation with that at Committee of the Whole if it's something that we can't discuss tonight. Thank you. But um, in the meantime, I would uh, like to not have anything changed with who is responsible for the billboards and who actually is allowed to put stuff on the billboards that the city maintains, please. Thank you. I want to add pure and simple. Uh, there's multiple billboards that need to be addressed, and I don't care where they are um, before any changes is made. To, uh, changes are made to them. I think that's something we, as a collective group, need to decide on. Thank you. That's a strange question, but do we know how many and where they are? I'm looking at Jeff, and I doubt that he. I don't know that he would know where. Hmm? There's four. Uh, you got from 64, 63. There's two up there, and then I wait. There's two, right? East and westbound Highway 8 and one, one south. Two, is there still? There are two well, south. There's only one up there now, isn't there? I think there's only one south. Down. I mean, it's the south. Okay. I believe so. And just FYI, the two on the north for sure are owned by the city. That's I understand the that. property. Yes. I know that, but that's been a question for a while. Yeah, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Can I make one comment? Just so everybody with all these different little groups we got going, the city crew does not do work unless it passes the council. Thank you. 
verification. <laughs> Are there any other public comments? Okay, moving on to uh, number two, uh, approval of liquor, cigarette, and other uh, licensing. Okay. Pretty much same as last year. Um, most of the operators are done. Everybody else got their stuff in. All the agents are good, with the exception of the farm table, they're not on here, but that's for later on in the month. And that is at committee of the whole? Yep, that'll be on the 21st. We'll have special counsel that night as well for that. And everybody's passed the inspection and we're good to go on all of them. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, liquor, cigarette, and other licensures, meaning uh, operator's license, as printed in our packet. You second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Moving on to resolution 05. 2023 resolution accepting 10 tools of uh, civility. This was uh, discussed at the committee of the whole meeting. Um, and it was affirmative that people wanted to move it on to the full council. Mm -hmm. The people had a chance to digest that and, and see if there were additional changes they wanted to see or. So it's in, in the record. Can we, can we just read the. Oh, 10 items <clears throat> just to get it out there. All right. So the, the 10 items that uh, there's other things that are listed uh, in here with the 10 items are pay attention, listen, be inclusive, don't gossip, show respect, be agreeable, apologize, give constructive criticism, take responsibility, and always tell the truth. These are pretty much verbatim as what was presented in the state of Wisconsin the municipality magazine over the course of the last number of months came from I believe from somebody through the U was you and was Wisconsin superior, superior. superior. yeah 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 mm -hmm. so is there a motion a motion to accept resolution 05-2023 a second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, resolution is passed. Resolution 06 uh, 2023 CMAR. Compliance maintenance resolution. Yeah, this is one we have to pass every year for Jeff. For our, uh, I think it's wastewater. Isn't it's it? the wastewater yearly permit. Just and everything is in line, and we will do all right this year. So everything's good to go. Okay. Is there a motion for resolution 06 to 2023? To accept resolution 06 2023. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, hearing none, uh, resolution 06 2023 has been passed. Uh, City of Amory meeting policy. And this was discussed at the Committee of the Whole. Is there a reason for the asterisks before City of Amory meeting policy? Mm -hmm. Is it referencing anything before the title? Oh, you mean on the actual document? Yeah, at least the one that we have. Is it referencing something or just a typo? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I didn't see anything else that it was re referencing, so thank you. And I just wanted to double check. I, we discussed at the last meeting that we wanted to switch it from a five minute total to five minute per person. And I see that that's on here. So I think that was the only change mm -hmm. that we discussed. I'll make a motion to approve the City of Amory meeting policy as printed. Is there a second? I second it. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, Bakke-Norman agreement. 
this is an agreement uh, to memorialize and paper what uh, Bucky Norman has been doing for us in the past. I know this is the first time that we're seeing it, so. I have a question in number three of the fees. The fee that uh, in the very last, the second paragraph, very last line says, in those cases, our nominal rates are 375 to 225. I've typically always seen, I, I wonder if, is that a typo or is it, or is it just a reverse order than what I'm used to seeing? It's, it's really a typo. It, that is our rate. It would be between 225 and 375. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. It's the same as they were. Yeah, it is the same as what we've been charged. We haven't increased it. There like a length of the term of this agreement. I don't see it in here, but I could be blind. So I don't believe there is typically in our fee agreement. We don't. We can put that in there easily if that's what you want. We have the problem. So we're not agreeing to any length of time yeah. with this. Okay. <clears throat> I, you know, we, we've kind of talked about other contracts and things that we have with folks going for two to three years so that both parties are able to plan and unless termination by a mutual agreement. Right. Um, Since this one doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have a range of, of costs per year. And there, it's hourly and as needed, so it's easy to get out or for them to terminate or come back to say we have to change the terms because the rates have changed, and that's about it. But I, I agree, we don't need a term on it. We don't need a what? We don't need a, a length on it. Are there further questions or comments? <laughs> Entertain a motion when people are ready. I'll make a motion to accept the agreement for legal representation. Is there a second? I'll second it. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Uh, looks like Ehlers is next on the presentation of uh, sewer rights. Sure, thank you for having me. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, we can, thank you. Okay, my name is Brian Raymer. I am with Ellers and uh, we have been hired to look at the sewer utility. So I believe you should have some packet materials, but I can also share the presentation on screen if you would like. Yeah, that would be great if you could. Okay. Okay, you should be able to see the screen now. Is that correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, thank you for having me. What We are here to kind of review the financial position of the sewer utility. And when we look at utilities, uh, please understand that these are some of the most capital intensive operations in which municipalities undertake. What I mean by capital intensive 
is that you, in order to put these assets in service to operate a 24-7, 365 uh, service to your mm -hmm. customers, it uh, costs a lot of money to put these assets in and make sure that you have the safe treatment and disposal of your used water. Um, and with that high cost also comes high maintenance expenses that can cause your year-over-year uh, o &M expenses to be quite volatile. So that is kind of one of the reasons why we look at a historical rate performance, um, not just looking at what happened last year and let's launch from that point, but let's look at a little bit longer range to get a better sample size. And that'll help us project out future o &M costs along with depreciation. Um, the sewer utility is currently experiencing higher o &M costs, and we'll kind of look at that trend on the following in the next couple of slides. Um, but you're also planning for some wastewater uh, treatment plant upgrades. So that's what I mean when you'll see WWTP throughout this presentation is that is wastewater treatment plant. Um, we're ultimately here then to kind of identify that fiscal sustainability. So we'll look at those future projections of o &M and depreciation as well as how are we funding these projects? What is the debt service on those projects? And what is the ultimate rate impact needed to uh, pay for that annual debt service? So a little bit of a historical perspective in terms of rate implementation after gathering some data with city staff is that the last sewer rate increase went into effect January 1st, 2017. And this increase was a flat 1% increase. So it's been some time that you've increased rates, um, about six years uh, plus now. Um, one of the items that I'll note there is typically uh, you will see uh, utilities that are unregulated. And in the state of Wisconsin, that's primarily sewer utilities, um, try to do more inflationary um, increases uh, over time. So you'll kind of see that in my future projections as well. Um, but with that said, without the, you know, regulatory purview of the Public Service Commission out of Madison, you know, you can set your rates um, by changing your ordinance or, you know, change through your ordinance, passing a resolution that identifies what the new rates are for your ordinance. In terms of that historical rate performance, I do understand that this is a numbers -y, uh slide, but it's, it's so for, uh, on purpose, and so that we can kind of review, hone in on some of the things that have been happening within the utility. What this ch chart is designed to accomplish is to basically answer the question, what should our rates be set at? And so for the uh, utility rate making methodologies that are generally accepted um, within the industry is uh, what's called our cash basis is one way to look at it and a utility basis is another way to look at it. Essentially all that does is say, what are the cost buckets in which our rates should be recovering? The cash basis looks at cash expenditures. So your day-to-day O&M expenses, your debt service, and then what's called cash funded capital. You can think of that as anything that you're financing year over year for capital expenditures that uh, you're not funding with debt. Typically these are smaller equipment items um, that you are funding or, you know, portions of larger ticket items, um, larger assets, you know, meaning mains or treatment plant um, that you may be um, using a portion of cash uh, for, but typically you're kind of using a mix of debt and cash for those larger ticket items. So think of this as more smaller um, equipment items or more regulator, regular uh, cash spending. Um, and then you would net out any other revenues of the sewer system and then just kind of say, are our user rates set to cover this revenue requirement? Same goes for utility basis, but the two differences are um, depreciation instead of debt and a rate of return instead of cash funded capital. Depreciation being a non-cash expense to pay for replacement of mm -hmm. um, assets in your system a rate of return is just kind of a mythical creature um, designed to say, what is the undepreciated value of our system and what percent should we be earning on that? Um, the PSC benchmarks all, all water utilities to a certain rate of return. For uh, sewer utilities, 
because they're unregulated, typically we'll see a lower rate of return um, on those utilities and, and more utility specific. So here I've kind of set the utility at 1.5% uh, to get a perspective there. That said, um, overall, we have seen an increase in O&M expenditures um, in the past uh, five years, inclusive of your 2023 uh, budget as well. So that is putting pressure on your rates um, here as we go. In addition, there is some additional debt service that's been taken on, primarily a 2021 clean water fund loan. Um, and then this does not include the future debt service for your wastewater treatment plant. So what do I, what do I mean when I say that is it's, it's time to do something even without uh, the future upgrades to be made at the wastewater treatment plant. And then um, on the utility basis, one thing to kind of consider there is if we were to remove this rate of return uh, item, um, are we covering our day-to-day -day operations and depreciation? That answer is no. Um, so again, kind of reiterating the point that it's time to do something um, even without the new um, upgrades happening or new capital investment. Outside of uh, rate performance, it's important to understand kind of your financial indicators as well. And so looking at some benchmarking, the first one that's important is, of course, reserves. The utility does have a healthy reserve position above our target. Our target is developed based off of your system size and customer makeup. Um, and we've identified three months of operating and maintenance expenses. That's inclusive of depreciation plus 100% of your next year's debt payment. One thing you'll note there is that spiked a little bit here in 2022 as a result of the additional debt taken on in 2021. And that will happen again. So just wanting to kind of recognize that as you take on the debt for the wastewater treatment plant, um, there would be another increase in terms of your target. So it's in a healthy position, but understand that the target will raise as additional debt is taken on. And kind of a reiteration, of the, the rate of return analysis on the previous slide is even removing that. You're not exactly covering um, depreciation. So that certainly compounds itself into a rate adjustment needed as you do add capital expenditures over time. So as you do have an aging system, if you're not recovering depreciation, this starts to kind of build on itself in terms of the rate adjustment necessary. In terms of that wastewater treatment plan upgrade, we did get costs you know, from your engineer. There is some additional uh, grant funding that may be available uh, to the city. So that has been included in this analysis. You'll see it's about 2.6 million plus dollars of grant funding. So that is included. We're not building the rates to pay for you know, dollars that you are receiving um, from grants. So the rates are designed um, in the future slides to pay for the prospective debt service that would be net of those grants or the 6.7 million um, of projected revenue debt outstanding to fund the wastewater treatment plant inclusive of the catch up rate um, that has been spoken to on the previous slides. We did also assume um, after reviewing with the engineer, you do have the option to run the loan on a 30 year life cycle. Um, one of the benefits of that is um, one, as long as the asset life would meet that uh, criteria, and it does, as the engineer did complete that design life analysis, um, you can kind of spread out those payments, lower your annual debt service, lower the coverage required, um, and therefore lower the rate impact. Um, if you do not adjust the rates, you would not be able to take out um, the debt in order to pay for the project. So our future projection in terms of the rate adjustment needed, this would be inclusive of not only of kind of the catch up rates talked about in the historical analysis, but this would also include the additional debt service as shown on this slide about halfway down this slide. Um, is intended to be a summary long range cash flow for the next 10 years. This goes chronologically left to right and revenues against expenditures as we move top to bottom. So each year we're looking at what are our revenues and then net of our expenses 
what is available for debt. And so that is this item about halfway down. And you want this number to be at least one. Of course, you want to be able to make your debt payments, um, but you will need to prove in order to take out the loan that this number is 1.1 or higher. Um, so please understand that the state will not give you the grant funding or what they call principal forgiveness, and they will not allow you to take out the loan unless you have rates in place that are at this 1.1 level at the time that you close on the loan. So it is our understanding that that loan closure might be a little bit out on the horizon um, in most likely um, 2024. Um, but that said, um, you would then have the opportunity as an unregulated utility to kind of figure out how do we want to adjust these rates on kind of a phased approach. So in speaking with city staff, um, this is the approach that we've taken here um, to get you to the point to close on the loan. And what you need to prove at closure is you have a rate adjustment plan in place by the time that principal starts that you can um, make the payments on your loan and cover your debt service 1.1 um, times that annual payment. So with that said, the cumulative adjustment needed is 70.5% as depicted here, when principal would kick in in 2026. Um, so you would have the option as to how you want to adjust these rates. This particular phasing was um, developed again with a conversation um, with uh, city staff. And so this would be kind of the recommended approach in order to adjust rates um, to close on that loan and be awarded that grant funding um, from the state. Um, and needed prior to loan closure. So ultimately that commitment would need to happen um, sometime in 2024. And that can be a forward looking resolution at that time. Of course, there's an adjustment that's shown here for a half year um, adjustment um, before that point. So um, that said, the benefit here being unregulated, we don't have to go through the PSC process. So there is navigation um, in terms of how that adjustment can be accomplished. Um, you know, based off of your discussion here tonight and in the future. Um, and then there's, there are adjustments shown in the future, and that's only to respect for uh, potential inflation as it relates to your O&M expenditures. And just kind of an indication that when you do take revenue debt um, out, that you should be kind of annually looking at your rates in order to make sure that you don't get caught by a volatile maintenance expense year and you would be short on your pledge to the state to maintain 1.1 coverage on your debt service. So the, the highest penalty there being is they can close the program for you and that would eliminate grant funding, that would eliminate the subsidized interest rate on their loans. Um, so you certainly wanna make sure that you keep coverage when you do have this debt outstanding with the state and that goes for any debt that you have outstanding in the future. So what is the impact of this kind of initial phased in approach kind of look like to a quarterly bill. Um, again, this is identified as an average user. I understand that everybody may think what average is differently. Um, so we do kind of provide what the charges would be if this was applied on a percentage basis to both the fixed and volumetric charge. Um, so if you'd like to calculate your own bill, you know, the change would be kind of your usage um, against um, the dollar amounts. Um, but that said, this is at 15,000 gallons per quarter. So please understand that. And then the uh, fixed charge adjusted um, by a percentage amount. We did also show the water utility bill as it stands now. The water rate study analysis will be coming in July. So right now this, as it relates to the sewer discussion is only shown you know, kind of for graphic purposes only um, to get to the total bill amount as we do understand that users see the total bill. Um, but right now the decision at hand is kind of um, only reflective of the sewer bill. And that 33 and a half percent change reflects to about a $41 change to an average user for a quarterly bill. In total, the 10 year plan would be about a $99 change uh, to the quarterly bill over 10 years. Um, and then we kind of speak to 
uh, the annual bill, you know, annualizing that cor quarterly bill and say that that obviously then timesing it by four um, would give us about a $400 change over the 10 year period. One reason we provide this column here that identifies median household in, or the percentage on median household income is that the American Water Works Association did an analysis a couple of years ago to identify kind of affordability as it relates to this metric. Um, we do kind of identify that this metric uh, means nothing to almost no one, meaning that like the median household income only would speak to the exact middle um, and therefore the representation um, is not exact. Um, but for their standard, they do say that affordability discussions should start at the point at which um, your utility bills by utility are about two to four percent, you know, so if they're higher per utility than two to four percent of MHI, that there may need to be kind of a deeper dive into affordability. And that could be through changing your rate structure um, or other means. Uh, but that said, um, looking at kind of the utility bills um, on a combined basis, you would want that not to be higher than four to eight percent. Um, again, respecting this doesn't speak to certain um, different individuals' income. This only speaks to MHI. Um, but that said, it's you know you're at two percent, um, which is lower uh, than that initial benchmark. If you're curious as to what it means for individual household incomes, understand that our more lengthy packet materials, Table 13, does dive a little deeper into that in terms of providing the percentage of your population um, that is at various income levels and the percentage of that same bill. So it does not take into effect uh, an assumption for lower usage or anything like that. Um, but what is that percentage on their income at that income level? So that would have maybe more of a targeted approach as it you know, would talk to affordability. It doesn't state that rates are affordable or not. It just kind of identifies, you know, what is that impact based on household income and a more um, targeted approach in terms of income level. Some of our recommendations would be determining the timing, you know, for your rate adjustment and here more, more rate adjustments. You would not need to commit to future future rate adjustments at that time, only understand that they would more or less be on the horizon unless you decided to, to tackle the total adjustment now. Um, that said, that wouldn't necessarily be our recommendation as things always change as we get closer to loan closing with these programs. Um, so I'd recommend kind of tackling the initial 2023 adjustment now based on the discussion you have after this presentation um, and kind of determine what what we'd like to do now um, first, and then we can, you know, tackle the later adjustments at a later time, but you are unregulated. So you kind of get to choose there. Um, we would recommend to do it at a point of implementation that makes it easy on your staff to administer, meaning so they don't have to prorate utility bills. Right now, our analysis, again, depicts only a half year 2023 implementation. Um, so we, you know, recommend billing on a quarterly basis, either, you know, doing it for that next quarter or the quarter after. Um, certainly, we do recommend utilities engage their customers. Um, so whatever prior practice was, but if you'd like Ellers to assist with any, you know, mailer info, um, or additional presentation as it relates to a public information session outside of this public meeting that you're holding now. Um, we can certainly help the city um, with that. And then as applicable, um, we do have our engagements kind of work in a stop and go analysis, a stop and go approach. And what I mean by that is there's a phase two if you'd like to hone in on certain aspects of the rates that you charge. What we mean by that is, you know, you can certainly apply a percentage across the board to your fixed and volumetric rate, but there are some utilities that would prefer to change the variability in which they charge um, fixed and volume rates. And so that kind of provides a little more in-depth analysis. And so that's what our phase two is designed to do. If you have category B users, also known as industrial strength users, this 
uh, cost of service study would more or less be required um, because a percentage across the board um, would not directly be equitable to those users as they are charged for things like BODs and phosphorus, but that may not be applicable. Um, but we just kind of wanted to say that if you did want to do that, understand that our engagement does have that option. If you'd like to look uh, kind of deeper into that, otherwise you certainly have your discretion to use a percentage across the board. Um, and then any other rate making goals uh, you may have within the utility, we could um, tackle um, within phase two as well. So um, at this time, I'll kind of take any uh, questions or comments and we can kind of open it up for discussion. Thank you. On uh, the sewer future projection that you shared with us, I, I'm thinking it has to be just a typo, but it talks about debt issued and grants and aid, and it shows nine million three sixty one. I'm assuming that should be five million three sixty one. Yeah, it would be net of it actually would be probably four million. Four million um, three sixty one. Yeah, because it should be net of the first uh, item received. Um, in total, matching the previous uh, page that you're getting debt and grant at 9381. So it should match that, correct? Okay. And then on the next page, um, the sewer impact on the average residential bill. Um, I know we made some assumptions, but that shows no increase in the water charge for the next 10 years. Is that realistic? No, the study is not done yet, so I didn't want to make any assumptions. You know, we were looking at that um, for your July meeting. So it's okay. it's only to show just kind of what is the water bill yeah, as yeah. that's typically asked. We made a lot asked. of assumptions here. I just thought that was what should have probably been caught too. So, that, so there probably will be some increase in water in it before a 10-year period is up. And yep, the, you'd see that, that next month. That goes, if the water price goes up, is that going to affect, uh, um, or is there any correlation between the, the water part of the bill and other than sewers based on how much water you use? But how about the cost of the water? Is there anything, I mean, are you going to come back and say, well, water went up 10%, so sewers got to go up some more in that period of time? Or? No, I would question? I would not see that. Okay. You you could have the option at the point at which um, the water study is completed next month, um, if you wanted to kind of phase it around, you know, the water utility. So kind of going back to that future projection page, if you wanted to look at um, the, for example, if the conventional rate case would be implemented in 2024 and there there is a 10% water. I'm not saying there is, but if there was and you'd rather kind of skip a year on the sewer, that would be certainly up to um, the council too. You know, so you could have that option. It would just increase the other two years, of course, because we're getting to that cumulative adjustment needed. And I apologize. The number actually is correct on the sewer projection. One, one reason that that does look different is because you've taken out interim financing uh, in 2023. And so um, in actual reality, you would have an interim financing payment to refund that. And so your total loan amount will be the 6.3 or the 6.7 million, but a portion of that would be repaying the interim financing at that point. So if you look mm -hmm. a little Above that, you're going to see your existing debt number, you know, have that $5 million payoff, and that is for the interim financing. So the numbers are correct. I apologize. So it is $9 million. So the total is $9 million. Sorry about that. We got to silence that. I'm sorry. Well, welcome here, Brick. <laughs> welcome. So am I correct in understanding that this initial big 2023 jump is to help make sure that we can get the funding that we need for our sewer project? Because we have to get up. 
that's going to be, it's a lot, but I also feel like we don't really have a choice because we need a super system that works. So. What are some of the other communities really identified but how are some of them addressing capital or category B users? Sorry, what was the question? What are some other some of the other municipalities in Wisconsin that you deal with? How are they what are the options for dealing with category B users? Options in how they're charged or what, what yes. do you mean options for them? Yes, how they're charged. Sure. So typically um, if they're sending um, waste that's above what you've outlined as domestic strength um, by your ordinance and code, um, you would be developing rates to say how much they're charged based on what you're sending. And that's typically in relation to your own permitting um, with the state and to identify that you're going to um, essentially have higher costs and higher treatment expenses as a result, as a direct result of what they're sending you. Um, so that could be, you know, the BODs, the suspended solids, you know, phosphorus, nitrates, whatever it is that they're impacting your system, you want to know that cost causation to get the direct rate of what they should be charged. Um, so we would be looking at their loadings as you'd likely sample them at the point at which it enters your system, because otherwise you might be getting some downstream uh, items. So typically would, they would have appreciate having a sampling right at the point at which they enter your system or right before. Um, so it would require sampling. And then beyond that, it's just kind of getting that true up in terms of how much are they sending per day, you know, whatever, whatever your structure of the more or less agreement that you would have with them. Um, but making sure that you get to an accurate assessment of what kind of costs are causing on your system as a result of the sewage that they send. We don't have any issues with that. Everything's flat on our end. It is. Bill anybody or extra bill. We don't have any industry that hurts anything right now. Okay. And what, what if that were to change in the future, just considering we have an industrial park that's now yep. if constructed? It, then you have they have to let us know what they're going to put into the system, and we come back to you on that and find out what we'd have to do. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, back to my the debt service uh, thing there. So we, our debt service now, uh, um, principal interest is fifty nine thousand roughly. Uh, as it shows up in that debt issued guarantee, is that a is there a plan to combine those two bills, or uh, if that goes out, I see clearly the end of, or to twenty thirty two. Um, is there value in combining those into just one and or is there not that's not allowed or what what's your thought on that combining which debt issues well we, right now we have existing uh p and i of 59 well yeah fifty nine thousand dollars and i'm a little confused as to why it's 186,005 million and then sure. it goes to 59 Sure, sure. Um, so ultimately, the what you'd be looking at for the existing debt, one of the reason is you've structured your uh, revenue bond anticipation note to pay interest uh, before it matures. Um, so the increase initially in 23, and then there's a portion of it in 24, um, is your interest expense on your bond anticipation note. Um, so you do have interim interest payments on that. Um, so that's what the 186 kind of reflects. The 59,000 is your ongoing uh, 2021 clean water fund loan. And to answer the question of like, can you combine with the new clean water fund loan? That answer is no. So the clean water fund loan program is designed to finance projects on an annual basis and they do not refinance or restructure their debt. 
So the reason that they're able to provide communities with subsidized interest rates is because they actually go to the bond market to fund their program outside of what they receive from the EPA and they get a AAA rating at the state. One of the reasons for that AAA rating is because they have a fixed income stream coming from all these municipalities and the debt service. So um, no, you would not be able to combine um, existing debt into this loan, um, but you did actually get a really good interest rate on that existing 2021 clean water fund loan, again, subsidized like is projected uh, here on the 2024 clean water fund loan. How far does that, how far into the future does that uh, go? Do you know? The f future or existing? It, well, the existing, we have at the 59,000 is, is that terminate in 2032 or is that continue on? No, that I believe was a 20 year loan from my recollection. Um, and so that would likely terminate 2042 because it's 20 years from your first principal, which I believe was I 2022. I that. Yep. yep. What rate are you anticipating with the, with the new clean water? Sure. Um, on the, on the bigger packet, if that was provided uh, to your group, table seven indicates the projected uh, principal and interest schedule for the future clean water fund loan. I did project a 2.695 interest rate. What that is assuming is the same kind of 55% of market rate, um, which you got in 2021, and that current market rate plus 1%. So I took the market rate as it stands today, added a full percent. This typically changes about a quarter percent up or down um, and more on a semi-annual cycle. I think the state does a really good job trying to keep this program attractive so that municipalities don't always jump to the market. You know, for those municipalities that don't receive grants, of course, you know, if you're receiving free money, you know, we're going to take free money, but um, they do the state does do a good job for keeping their rates, their market rate low, but then you qualify, the city actually qualifies for what's called the subsidized rate, which is 55% of that market rate. So that's where the 2695 exacto magic kind of comes in. Yeah. <laughs> More questions for Ehlers? Um, so we have budgeted the increase in 23. And that assumption was based on third quarter. Increase to happen in third quarter. So third and fourth quarter. That's when we're going to do the increase. Yeah. Okay. So third quarter build in the fourth quarter? Or? Third quarter is in October. That's so starting in less than a month. Okay. All right. I just wanted that clarification. And at that time, we would be changed over to monthly billing rather than quarterly. I'd like to wait. And when is the water study going to be done? Like July. Okay. And is that correct, Brian? And then yeah, you'd be you'd be getting a presentation like this uh, at your July meeting right now is the plan, and we would look at what the what I call windows of opportunity are with the Public Service Commission in Madison. So you don't get to choose, unfortunately, and so we'll provide kind of how you navigate that process at that meeting. Um, but that would and we would provide kind of how long each process takes and everything like that. So kind of to be determined at this point, but you would get a very clear picture in July, a similar presentation, but very heavily focused on the PSC process. It's not quick. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Again, what the percentage increase will be for the third quarter. Down here, it's uh, 33.5, Mm -hmm. 
Is it 33.5%, Brian? Correct. Yeah. And then the, the dollar change would be on that um, sewer impact on average residential bill slide or table. Oh, I, I closed it out. Um, table, I believe 12 in the uh, deliverable. We'll have two step increases. Mm -hmm. And those are significantly lower. <clears throat> okay. Any further questions? Because there's no action that we're taking on it. This was just information for us now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me. Uh, everyone have a great night. Yeah, thank you. you too. Our next one, we'll move on to ordinance number 02-2023, all-terrain and utility uh, terrain vehicles. I put this on the agenda at Rick's request, actually. He wanted to talk about the ATV route ordinance that we passed Last not long ago, 2021, maybe? Yeah, something like that. We had quite a big debate about uh, uh, westbound County Trunk F traffic coming into the city, and I was under the assumption that we limited uh, traffic at whatever that street is. It's just uh, east of the east of the uh, bridge on Forty Six. Um, but it might have been Minneapolis too. We talked about both of those, but. I don't think our, our current uh, listing says that ATVs are not, they can't come from the city limits in. Correct. The and, I, and I don't, I don't, I, I'm sure that was not part of what we discussed because, uh, you know, the only alternative for them there is to go across private property, i.e. the school or um down the street and then across uh, the weld the welding shop there and I don't think we have the authority to be able to direct them that way. So I if we didn't have that discussion, we, did you find anything in the minutes, Ben, or did you maybe not? I just saw that, that we took Tom's recommendation at the time to shut down where he wanted shut down, and the portion you're talking about it says in the old ordinance, um, it shut down from Minneapolis to the city limits on the east side. That's all it says. Yeah. So the ordinance that you guys have is identical to the one we already have. It just removes that one section. Right. And then that gives that gives ATVs that enter the city the opportunity to hit Minneapolis south or north at that intersection. Mm -hmm. so just mm -hmm. lose things up. I don't know that anybody's, you know, I, I did have somebody ask me or say, how do you expect me to get into the city? You know, they, hey, I thought we changed that. So this will do that. What I, if I remember correctly, the conversation was because of the narrowness of the road from the entrance to the north of the school there out to uh, the city limits. It was so narrow, and Tom was concerned about also having an ATV on it. But you know, I don't know. They, they come in the F down the right. water, it was the south, same with the road. So, right. yeah. So I make a motion to pass the uh, amended ordinance 022023. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Okay, so for a point of clarification, there really isn't anything listed as far as the route from um, Keller Avenue East. You mean, what, what is, you mean forbidden routes? Because this, uh, this is on locks every road except for the two. Yeah, areas. they're just identifying which ones you can't. These are the exclusions. I so understand. It, it removed the exclusion of the one to the east. So we're allowing from the city limits in to Keller Avenue. No, no, to Minneapolis. It doesn't say Minneapolis. It doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. doesn't say that. It doesn't say that here. The previous one allowed it from 
Keller down Broadway to Minneapolis. What was forbidden was from Minneapolis to the city limits for whatever reason. But it still allows from from uh, or doesn't allow from Minneapolis to the to Keller, right? It does on here. You just can't go on Keller. Mm -hmm. You can go up Broadway and then mm -hmm. the side roads. Because that's part of why yeah. Broadway only has street parking on the one side of the street. That, that's, that I was that escaped somehow because I I'm I personally am not in favor of allowing traffic uh, ATV traffic from Minneapolis to Keller. So maybe we should just I should withdraw my motion and we'll table it for another month and change that. As long as you can we can get what the intent is. Corrected. That's yeah, yeah. Nice just to allow people to get to a city street safely, but uh, Broadway is not a very safe. I mean, there are many accidents, but it's it's pretty hairy. No, Tom's thing was before he thought they could come in on the trail. Right. Right. You know, right on Waterman Road there, 90th or whatever it is, you can get the trail and drive right in. I, that was his plan before to keep him out from. Makes no difference to me. Mm -hmm. I know that was the idea. Okay, so there was a motion, there was a second, but now you're withdrawing your motion. Yes, that's acceptable. With the With that, to, to have it rewritten for another month, yeah. unless we can just do that here. I think we'll make it confusing. Yeah, let's, let's get the clarification done when you back up. All right. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to number nine, deliberation and action on termination appeal of for police administrative assistant. Um, I I guess I can start with my thoughts. Um, I've had a lot of people write to me. I've had a lot of people approach me for conversations. Um, I've also spent a lot of time in thought over the last several days. So I just have a few things that I would like to say um, as we start the conversation. Uh, the first thing is that I understand that Wisconsin is an at-will state and recognize and personally heard in the um, body cam footage I'm leaving, you'll be hearing from my attorney. But that being said, I have some pretty significant concerns and things that I just think need to be brought up. Um, primarily, I think that HR or some sort of third party person should have been involved in this situation um, for the protection of both the city and for Miss Escrow. I think that not having some sort of third party person led to a lot of mishandling uh, and made them, the water really muddy. Uh, it's also incredibly clear to me that we have some major trust issues between our new chief and his staff, and that's really, really disheartening to me because I'm extremely pro Amory Police Department, uh, and I don't think that these trust issues are going to lead to productive police work in our city. So that's something that I think we really need to address. Um, I think those trust issues may have led to this investigation. I don't know that I would jump to immediately questioning someone's intent taking a photo if I didn't have trust issues um, in the first place. And the only real evidence that we have against Bethany is that she took a photo which could have been passed from person to person all over the city without her knowledge. Um, another thing that I wanted to bring up uh, is that I think disrespect is extremely subjective. And in my mind, I personally see a woman who was put in a position where she was uncomfortable, likely without warning. Um, and we all respond differently to that. I know that Steve sees her behavior as disrespectful and he has the right to that, which is why I still believe that HR or a third party should have been involved to navigate those interpersonal issues. Um, Steve has every right to run his department the way that he sees appropriate. However, personally, I feel like both Bethany and Steve made emotional decisions in those final moments of the tape. And it's not a management decision that I personally agree with based off of the evidence that was presented. At a bare minimum, I would like to advocate that we remove the unsubstantiated claims from her termination paperwork because there's a lot of things in the paperwork presented that there is no clear evidence for. Um, we are a board, so I know that 
you all can disagree with me, but I have lost a lot of sleep over this and I felt like these things needed to be said. I think we're going to in for a penny and for a dime. Um, I want to just say, first of all, I, I'm going to accuse myself from voting. Uh, Bethany and at least half of her siblings worked for me at one time or another. Um, and I just am not very comfortable passing judgment either way on her. I, will do that. I guess I have a question for you, Beth, and I, I just ask you because I've known you for a long time. Do you think you'd be able to work with in in that? And I'm going to pose the same question to Steve. If you got your job back, will you be able to work at that job without recrimination? Exactly, exactly. Representing Alexis, that would cost you to ask the question for either party. I'm receiving the desire to do so. Um, if you need a clarifying question, perhaps, but I would try to focus on what's already been presented at the hearing. Quite the pain of me, I wasn't at the hearing. Can't be answered. Just yes or no would be fine. Thank you. I don't want you to say any more than more that might, you know, cloud anybody. Steve? Yes. Okay. I think one of the one of the key points Michaela brought out was emotion. Um it's it's difficult to separate um emotion from practical discussions when you especially when you're in the heat of that discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it's, it's, it's kind of strange um, that you had, there was body cam footage. Without that one, it would be two people's word, you know, <laughs> against the other of what was going on. And, and, and in this case, it seemed like it was just a, getting to be more of an emotional type of discussion than it was, um, an interview, which, for whatever reason, um, can trigger somebody to want to get away from that situation. So, um, it only comes down, in my mind, it only comes down to whether um, Sesco leaving was recent, you know, sub insubordinate and reason for termination, because none of the, none of the other things have anything to do with this at all <laughs> a lot of confusion a lot of but I, it, in my mind it, that doesn't enter into what what i'm going to use for decision making so um i think it's important to keep the emotion out of it and, mm -hmm. and make make a solid decision for for this particular one item I agree. I don't think that the uh, Facebook information is material to be brought into our decision tonight. It was a really, really tough last six days for myself, as I'm sure it was for Ms. Asgrill and the chief. I listened to the the hearing, three and a half hour hearing, several times. Since I recently, about three years ago, we moved here to Amory. So I'm kind of new. I'm biased. I don't have any opinion, strong opinion about anyone. I just listening to it. My mind had to change at least 
a dozen times. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to one point of view, then I would listen to the other point of view. I think the chief questioned her professionally. I don't think he was harassing her. I stand behind the, the police chief regarding questioning and everything. However, there's just, like the other council members have said, a lot of emotions came into it. So much has transpired over the last several months. I feel for both individuals. However, we have to run a police department and if there can't be trust and loyalty, I don't know. I'm still, I agree. I had a decision made before, but now I'm leaning on the fact that I guess it's just up to the board to decide what we feel is right or wrong. There's emotions on both sides. I just so wish that Ms. Escrow wouldn't have left. And there was also topics that the chief brought up regarding our handbook. And I wrote down the different notes, notations that he had mentioned. And I read through our handbook and it's clearly written. It's clearly written. I don't know, I just guess I'm looking for other opinions of the board. Um, I made lots of notes as well as I'm sure. <laughs> um, I personally have been, I've faced issues with this as an employer um, and been in the same situation. And I've had it go both ways. And um, I think that this issue, um, as we've all mentioned, was very emotionally charged. And I would like to think that had um, um, had I if we can put a little time between that day and the next day without having the last five minutes happen, I guess, um, would other emotions have come to table? That would perhaps have a different outcome from both. Mm -hmm. And um, I would love to rewind, as we've said 20 days ago, I'd love to rewind five months ago. And we can't do that. I would, however, like to believe in the good of humanity and that um, that we can maybe all get along, regardless of the circumstances that this has brought up and the last five months have brought up. And um, this, is a, this is a very tough decision. Like I said, I've faced this personally, and it's, it's not easy no matter, no matter what. So this is not a personal decision for me by any stretch of the imagination for either of you two. So this, this is not easy. Mm -hmm. I've also had experience as an employer and having to had face issues very similar to this. And it's never easy. There's never an exact answer, but if we could rewind and if Ms. Jessica had asked for an hour or the rest of the day or a day off or something using personal time off or something to kind of regroup that we have given both of them some space to come back at it the day later and discuss it from that point forward. Um, I don't think departing the way that Ms. Esco did was professional, to say the least. Um, 
rather than asking her supervisor, Steve, for some time off to let this settle, to instead threaten him with legal action. Um, I know how I would have handled that. So I I don't get a vote, but I'd like to have at least a voice. Um, a committee hired Steve to be the police chief. Yes, I appointed Steve to that position, and it was approved by this council to to be the police chief. And and I agree with a lot of the council members uh, of what's been said uh, here today that there was definitely a lot of emotions and. Um, I'm sure I would have been emotional in those moments as well. I don't know that I would have made the decision at that moment. I would have allowed some time, some air, some gap um, between, uh, regard, no matter what was said, I think everyone needed to, a clearing of air before we proceeded. Um, but ultimately, we did hire Steve to do a job, and is it up to this council to override the the job that we hired him to do, and that is to run the department? Are there any more thoughts before we make a final determination? Procedurally, we take a motion and a second and then proceed with a roll call. How, what is our, I, I, I have never done this and hope we never have to do it again, so. You can always call for roll call. Okay. Um, can I ask another question? Yeah. Um, should we, should we decide to um, reverse the termination? Um, what sort of, I mean, obviously this is up to Steve, if it's up to Patty as the administrator, what sort of um, consequences might there be to an employee who, um, to an employee who basically terminated their position um, and coming back, is there any sort of consequence of leaving your place of work without authorization? Is there written warnings? Is there um, verbal warnings? What would happen in that case? I'm just putting that out there um, based on the um, decision that we have to make now. Um, this to me is not done, um, but I think, you know, should, should it be decided to reinstate her employment, um, I don't think this is the end. I think there needs to be some involvement um, with others to determine any sort of um, disciplinary action, should that be the case and should it be necessary. So. What, are others, what does the rest of the council think about what Sarah just said? I think it's a really valid question. Um, is it, if we were to reinstate, obviously we can't just throw our hands up in the air and say, okay, have fun, figure it out. Um, because it, there's going to need to be some relationship repairing. There's going to need to be some sort of something in the file. Um, I don't know exactly what that looks like. Do we have any sort of policy or anything that we have written or that we could go off of from the past in the event that that happens? I think it's been the handbook says. Oh, this is, is that something we can develop for a future reference for all departments within the city? Do well, we have a consistent? I'm sure you have verbal warning notices, yeah, written notice. warning notices. That's that's essentially what I'm referring to. Yeah, there's a, there's step verbal warning. I mean, I, I also feel like I'm kind of getting ahead of the, ahead of the game here, but I, I wanted to say that out loud 
just in, depending upon the vote. Is there any way that we could we do reinstate Miss Escrow? Some type, some process that we can create to make it like a mediation or just make it easier for both people involved so they can work together so we can do I, not have to go I, through I think our limitation thing. is to hmm? our, I think our limitation is to do just one thing mm -hmm. and I'm going to yeah. look at Lindsay oh. because I don't think we can write policy as part of this decision uh, right one thing mm -hmm. yep. okay. and I understand all of those things but I still I don't I don't want to cloud our side of the things with right. trying to make right. it easier for it. it's just mm -hmm. it's either an up or a down mm -hmm. and I would advocate the... that we discuss that in the future and we need to walk through what our even just what our mediation policy is in general what the position of HR is what their role is in all of our departments. Mm -hmm. You'll help us with that, won't you? Okay. So Lindsay, procedurally, then the the roll call is I, I just do a roll call. There is nothing but I think I'm going to follow the second and then a roll call would be the first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Mayor, yes. Because I'm not going to vote on this, I don't think I have to even if I make the motion. To get it on the floor without further ado, I will make the motion to reinstate Bethany, and then you folks vote, vote your heart. He's done. Okay, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. All right. I just thought I'd take the onus off everybody else for. Oh, I made my perspective clear right away so I can be the person to do it. Um, I would like to make the motion to reinstate Bethany Escrow in her former position. Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, any further discussion before we do a roll call? All right. Roll call. Marks. Yes. Thank you. Thompson? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is just a roll call, correct? Or is this a vote? This is a roll call vote. Roll call yes. to overturn the motion is to overturn the the termination. No. Wow. Yes. Okay. So a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. First by Eric and second by Sarah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.